and occasionally I'm throwing a echo, which might mean people have to mute except when they're speaking, which I really hate to do. do, 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 do that. Okay, let's jump right in. Uh, let's try another microphone. Can you hear me now? Or is that better? I'm yes, sure. a little bit. Okay. I will do my I will do my best given the challenges of technology. I'm just grateful to have gotten in at all tonight, given at all what was happening. Okay. Let's start with the February minutes. Um I know that and I'm gonna open that. Cindy had told me that there was an issue with uh, what we had said in terms of the band for the library event. Is Joyce on? Joyce is not on, shoot. Because I thought she would know what exactly we had agreed to. I may have to sort that out separately. And we'll vote on the minutes next month. I don't want to tie things up while we work on it. Run to table it for now. And... Yeah, so let's table the minutes, and I will have to talk to Joyce about the question on um, the ban for, for the library. Uh, were there other comments or questions on the minutes that we can resolve? I know we, we won't vote on this, but if we wait until next month, we won't remember anything that we talked about last month. Okay. I don't so see I, any issues. No. Yeah, I don't, I don't see anybody raising any issues. I will therefore talk to Joyce and we will vote on the February minutes at our next meeting. <clears throat> Is that okay with everybody? Yep. Sounds good. Okay. Now for the minutes. Okay, fundraising update. There were a couple of pieces of work that I wanted to talk about. Fred, can you talk briefly about who we have gotten checks from? Uh, we've gotten checks from quite a few people. The uh, Scoop ad get, gave us I want to say eight or ten small checks from people who got that. Uh, we've got big checks from Yankee Candle and uh, Sanderson's Fairview Farms. Those are the major ones. Those were 5,000 each. Nice. I was hoping, um, my computer is again not letting me into things. I wanted to bring up the spreadsheet that I'd asked everybody to update regarding uh, who they have spoken with so we know where we stand on that. And I have to do this on my phone, which is ridiculous, but technology is hating me today. Okay. Um, Adelia, you, I have that you have spoken with several of the places that you have had signed up for. I really hate, I hate to take our time going through this line by line, but people, honestly, people are not, people are not, that we don't know who has been contacted and who hasn't. And if somebody has not been contacted, has not been contacted. They, they, I'm still hearing that echo. They should be, but we don't know because people haven't done the spreadsheet. Do you want me to go through this line by line now collectively and we can 
check off who you've contacted with or is there a better way like people going into the spreadsheet? I'm sorry, I'm going to be a bitch about this, but we are hurting ourselves by not keeping this information up to date because we are on the one hand leaving money on the table like as of this week no one had contacted Waitley in. How can that have happened that no one had contacted Waitley in? I have since you know, realized that and assigned it to someone and hopefully that will happen. We also had a situation where somebody went to someone on their list and was, it was greeted with, yeah, somebody's already contacted me. Well, we don't know who's talking to who. So I can go through this, except that I have to do it on my phone, which is really annoying because I can't get it to work on the computer. Or can people, okay, let me put it this way. Who would like me to go through their, their assignments on the call now and I, could, I will check it off for you versus you will go in yourself? And I can read the order in which things are in here. Like Adelia, I know you've contacted many of yours, but you're not up to date on all of them. Do you want to go through them now, or do you want to go in and check them off yourself? I'll go on and I'll check. Okay. Uh, I, I, if, if I can interject, I think let's make sure people go into the spreadsheet. The link is on the agenda for this meeting. Do it yourself so we know who's contacted whom. I don't want think we want to waste time yeah. now going item by item through this. That's a good idea. I agree. I don't, I hate to spend the time on this, but I've been asking for this for a couple of months and we are, I, I, I need people to do this. I'm sorry yeah, if the, I'm The link not. is easy to find. It's right on the same email as the link that you use to get into this meeting. If anybody is unable to use the link and wants to go through it with Fred or me one one-on-one, -on -one, just contact us and we will happily help you. But we need to know who has not yet been contacted and who has been contacted so they're not contacted twice, which just puts eggs on our face. Okay, let's move on to happier topics. Oh, actually, before we do that, Yankee Candle um, generously gave us 5,000, which we talked about last time. They also um, drove up to our house the other day and put in our garage 250 of these, which we can sell and we need to discuss what price we want to sell them at and how we want to sell them, but we can sell them as another source of income. So... I'm going to hold talking about them more specifically till we get to the souvenir section. But when we're talking about donations, I just wanted to share that because that's really exciting news. Let's talk, go through very quickly the events themselves. Again, I'm just looking for, is there anything, any update that the organizer for that um, event wants to share? If not, that's fine. And you can just, pass and we'll move on. Uh, our, the Arts and Crafts Show, any update on that, Lisa? Yeah, actually, we have a lot of things happening on that. We have a sponsor from what you sent me the email, CN Wood and Company. Yes, yes. Right? So awesome. very, very excited about that. Yep. Um, my department, we needed easels for a lot of the artists and to um, put the, like, the headshots and the artist bios out for display. And my department has a bunch of them and has offered for us to use them for the day. So they're another sponsor for us because they're going to be donating all the easements for us to use. So that was really good. Um, we're Lisa, all meeting. Lisa, yes. Lisa, if you just let me let me know who to contact in the department because I'll need to put it in as an in-kind contribution. Um, me. <laughs> okay, that, that's easy. Yeah. Um, I can email you the information on that. Um, and then we're all getting together this Sunday at the town hall to look at the space and start talking about logistics. Um, Keith gave us information about the tables we have available. Um, 
I don't know. Did we have a lot of things? Oh, and we have um, somebody to play music at our event that just happened today. So I'm very excited about that. E email me who is doing the music. It's one of the yeah. artists and it's free and they're donating their time. Great, but we, we may want you to use that for um, promotional material when we're talking about the events. Absolutely. So if you can just email me that, that would be great. Excellent. Um, how, so about how many artists do you have now? 18. Excellent. And I still That's need to do the call out for the youth artists, but I'm not worried about that. I think we'll be fine. Actually, I do have one question. I was going to look into renting tablecloths, but I noticed that to purchase them on Amazon is really inexpensive. Is that something that would be like okay to do and then donate them to the town after the fact? Yeah, that certainly that would be in your budget if you've got a sponsor that yeah. will pay yeah. for that. Yeah, definitely. Just making sure that those kinds of things are what I can spend the money on. Lisa, can I, I have a quick question? Who is who's participating? Are these Waitley artists? Are they area artists? Only Waitley artists. Nobody yeah. wanted okay. outside artists. So yes, okay. everybody from Waitley. So, Good. So that's it. We're doing great. Oh, Lisa. Yeah. Lisa, if you need more tables, there are tables stored in the Historical Society. Oh, excellent. Thank you so much, Adelia. Actually, and that's one more thing. I was in contact with Neil in the Historical Society, and they're going to have the museum open for the entire day during our event, so people can come in and right. see the museum right. as well. So. Yes. Fantastic. And uh, I see Judy Marklin is with us in a few minutes. We'll talk about the other things that the Historical Society is doing to coordinate with what we're doing. Okay, John, barbecue. It's the 24th. <laughs> Any updates, anything to, to share on it? Uh, no, we went down and we measured the tent, uh, the way we're gonna put the tent. We're gonna put some more blacktop down so that the space will be larger for both for the polka and for the uh, chicken barbecue. Um, we're gonna have 196, I think was the number of tables and chairs that are gonna be set up. We're gonna start at 5.30 and seven and It'll be all done before the fireworks shoot. Sounds perfect. Good, good, good. Um, and and I've, been, I've been told, and I've been told that um, the town is going to have a, a site set up so that we can sell online tickets. Yeah, yes, um, I, Ashley, I don't know if you have more information on the ticketing. There will definitely be online tickets. We have to decide how much the tickets are going to be. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that, but we, well, we need to figure out how we're going to get, how they get out there, how, what the, the I'm, connections I, are. John, I can certainly set up something on Eventbrite for, for this. I just okay. need to know how much and then we can put it up on Facebook and then it will be out in the world basically. I, I will get to you directly then. We won't tie up our meeting anymore. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, Joyce isn't here to talk about cruise night nor the concerts. Adelia, I wanted to talk about the ecumenical service. What you described last month sounds perfect. It was brought to my attention actually by the library folk that the Sunday of the ecumenical service is also Juneteenth. And the library was asking if we're going to be doing something on Sunday or if they should be incorporating something on a mayor event on Monday. And I was thinking, you know, the service would be a great time to celebrate Juneteenth as well, but I wanted to get your thoughts and if you wanted to talk to your committee. Somebody from the library sent me a very a short list of the types of events that are done for, or the types of things that are often done for Juneteenth celebration. And two of them struck me as very doable for us. One is reading of the Emancipation Proclamation. And the other is singing um, spirituals like Sing Low Sweet Chariot. I wanted, I, I sort of wanted to give you and the church first refusal on Juneteenth because that's the actual day uh, before I talk to the library about it for the following day. What are your thoughts? Um, Jane and Kit and I are meeting this week. And so I'll bring that up with them. We have not discussed it. So I, 
I don't have an answer, but it sounds okay. like Great. Let me yeah, let me know what what you all decide. And that brings me. Okay. I'm just making notes as we talk. So that I, I told the library I would get back to them. They're fine if you want to do it. It's not that they want to. They think it's important that we do something one of those days. Can I ask a question, Susan? Yeah. Um, where did, who told you that TJ and the Peepers was coming to the library? I wasn't, I was out of town at your last meeting and I'm reading the minutes and it says that TJ and, and the Peepers was going to play the night that you opened the time capsule. That's what the notes say. But my thought, what I thought we had done is we had booked the badass jazz band to play that night. So did something change, is someone changing something that I don't know about? Because I was not aware of that and I haven't even contacted TJ to see if he could come that night. I know we have a booked in August, but I, I don't know where that information came from. So that's okay. I mean, we'll have to get back to you on that. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that either. We need Joyce for that. Okay. Um, jo Joyce is out of town time. this week, I know. She won't be back till Friday or the weekend. Okay, yeah. I'll, unless they're changing things around. I, Amy, that's all right. you had, Amy, you had something on yeah, that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it came from Joyce because I was going to have TJ and the Peepers for family day. And she did say that the library um, was planning on using his, uh, that band for their event. But um, I don't know where Joyce got the information from, but I did hear that from Joyce. Okay. What, I had, what I had suggested to Cindy that we would like to get TJ and the Peepers at some point and I thought family day, depending on what you had going on down, there would be a great place to put them that day. Plus we would also do the badass jazz band at the library. So maybe that's where the confusion is. I don't know, but um, I do know that um, I, I would love to get TJ for family day because he draws a big crowd and you know he'd be great with the kids and everybody. If, I, if I'm hearing both of you, the representative of the family day and representative of the library event, it sounds like you are in agreement that you want your preferences TJ for Family Day, Badass Jazz Band for the library. Is that correct? It could yes. be or depend. It, yes. And then the, she thought of if it rains, they would put do the whole thing over at the town hall that night because there's 19 members of that band coming. There's 19 members in that jazz band. Wow. That's yeah, it's it's going to take up the backyard, let me tell yeah. you. Okay, let me talk. Let me talk to Joyce. And I, I don't know at all. This may be totally fine. I just I need Joyce. Yeah. Okay. Excuse me, Susan. And yeah. That wouldn't be possible because we're setting up for the art show on Monday, so we wouldn't be able to go indoors. Okay. Uh, we have the. Pet available at the fire station. Thank you, Keith. Say that again, Keith. Break out. Susan, we have the tent available at the fire station if need be. Oh, Perfect. Good. So that can be our rain location if we have to. I mean, okay. it's, it's a little bit tough because we can't dedicate, we won't be there to dedicate the gift, but we, uh, we certainly can do that. As long as we're on the topic of the library event, uh, two women that I did, Teresa and uh, Jennifer, maybe, I don't know who they were, reached out to me, the quilt is done. Yes. And we want to dedicate the quilt, and the two thoughts I had on that were family, oh, I'm sorry, the event at the library is when we're dedicating things, but is there a great way to display it? Versus Lisa, I was thinking on Tuesday at the Arts and Crafts, we can hang the, the old quilt, the quilt from 50 years ago, and the new quilt next to it. And people who are at within town hall for the Arts and Crafts show can appreciate the quilt then. And I wanted to get the group's thoughts on that. I think it's a great idea. You it's, tell Lisa, you would be okay with that? gorgeous. Absolutely. Okay. So I forgot, um, uh, Katie, I forgot that you are 
involved in that too. So we will tell them that that's going to be on Tuesday. You know, sort of the unveiling for the quilt will be on Tuesday, rather Tuesday at town hall rather than Monday at the library. I just couldn't figure out a good, safe way to display them outdoors on Monday. Outdoors. Okay, let's go back to running through events. Family Day, you had some exciting news to share. Yeah, we did um, yeah, we get Tom's hot dogs to um, serve food. So that's gonna be good from uh, willing to do from 10 to two or later if needed. Um, we do have, um, we, we reserved our bounce houses. Um, we also have, um, Ashley forwarded me this great vendor called Rock and Roll. Um, they're going to come and do this. It's like um, ra a little race car set for the kids to participate in. So that will be good. Um, what else? I've been talking to Keith about the big rigs that might be able to, to be there that day. Um, so I think we're, we're in good shape unless Brenda or Lola have anything they want to say. Well, I have a little bit of update. Um, I was researching the face painting uh, for family day and I did find a vendor who will do it and it could be, but it's a, it can be very elaborate. It can be very, very elaborate. Yeah, real pretty. But we can, they willing to work with us for budgets and stuff like that to try to make it cheaper for us. Four, four hours and beautiful, you know, like cat faces and everything else, plus balloons twisting is a thousand dollars. Fine. But that that is just that's the full boat. We can we can do it in less we can do with less elaborate face painting so that you're cut, you know, you're not having go, so many people. We've got, 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 got the money for that. We've got the money. Go full boat. Not, pardon? We've got the money I'm for sorry. that. Go top of the line. <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. The and only... Katie Ross, Katie Ross and the library were going to make a donation to us. It was her idea to come up with it. I got to give Katie credit. It was her idea and I just went looking. And so the library may give us a donation to help defray some of that cost. So at, she's got to go back to the library and see uh -oh. what they like to do. Because a thousand dollars, I'm sure, is way out of what they were thinking as far as a budget. But that would keep be perfect. Mind, keep in mind, the state has given us ten thousand dollars that has to be used for family day. Okay, then we. That is your total. This is the, their license, their COVID nineteen, their. Uh, professional uh, staff that got multiple people, and so I can send uh, I can send you a um, a copy of their website so you can get or what they sent me. Uh, Great to give Good. you that, that sounds that's so. the only thing I just want to remind the family day people: you have ten thousand dollars to spend. Please don't spend less than that, which is you know, something I would never say on any other topic. Uh, because they, you know, they have given, or they're giving us the ten thousand dollars, but we must have invoices by the day of the event. Okay. So can that, we use that, that for one string. Can we use get a musical? Can we use get a musical day? under that ten thousand? I'm yes. sorry. Can we okay. get a musical group to come in, like somebody like um, somebody like? Um, the guy up the street with Mr. G or something, because he charges a thousand. Yeah. yeah, and yes, absolutely. That that would come under it. Yeah, come that's what I it. figured. Yeah. And if the budget goes over the ten thousand, that's okay too. You're not capped to ten thousand. We don't start going into the money that we have until after you've spent the first 10,000. Now don't waste money, but no. we want this to be a really, really memorable event and can afford to, to do that. Great. 
Good. Okay. Anything else on family day? Sorry, Amy. I didn't have a chance to talk to you yet. <laughs> I think um, it's great. Thank you. I think it's great. Thank you. John Fireman's Buster. Any updates? Fireman's Buster. I saw it on. I saw it on Facebook today. It was posted this afternoon. Um, oh, nice. Uh, Wait. Uh, Wayne and I went to uh, Hinsdale for a meeting of the mines and the teams are that are there and we have the date and um, we're gonna it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Let us know if you need anything for that. Um how many teams are there, John? Uh it depends on how many show up, Chip. I don't I don't know the answer to that because we're gonna we're going to try to schedule it so that we have both. Uh, we're going to try to schedule so we have a, a more foot events so yeah. that we might get some local, like South Deerfield and like they do at the Franklin County Fair. But we're still going to run the truck events like so we can get the, the competition. Good. That the, that the people like to watch. Yeah. And yeah, there will be oil fire. Um, and while we're on you, between you and Sarah, anything happening with fireworks? Last we heard, you were going to school. Uh, is Sarah on? Yep. Yep. I, I have nothing new on the fireworks other than I got permission from the neighbor to use her property, and it doesn't have to be as long as the town cleans it up when we're done. Excellent. If, if, if people bring in her slobs, you know, and leave their beer cans all over the property, but we'll have to clean up the town property and the neighbor's property. And yeah. the neighbor's property. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. We have talked about the library event, the, the parade. The one thought I had on the parade, and you are probably way ahead of me on this, is the fact that Christian that Christian Lane going to impact the parade. What about Christian Lane? What about Christian Lane? The, the fact that it's down to one lane. No. It will, not, it will not affect that. Okay. We don't, floats aren't bigger no. than whatever that width is or anything no. like that. No. As I said, you were probably on the top of it. <laughs> the friend and I were driving over the bridge the other day, and I'm like, will that thing float fit on this thing? Yeah, the, my, the, the only ones that will have a problem would be the mummers, I'm guessing, but they can, they're, they're people, so in, and the cars won't go around in circles on a on a bridge. I'll bet. <laughs> Not the mummers, but the shriners. You mean, the, you mean the shriners? Okay. Shriners. Right, shriners. Yeah. Okay. So it occurred to me I wanted to raise it, but I figured you all had got this through. Um, polka night, Bates. Yeah, the only thing I've got uh, an update to at this point is going to be there's going to be an adjustment in the time. So, okay. But I don't know what that adjustment's going to be, but I'll let you know when I do. Okay. Okay. Yeah, let it let us know. And last I heard, you also wanted to talk to Tom's about food. Yeah, no, that's a done deal. We're good. So Tom's will do both polka yep. night and family day. Yep. Wow. He nice. Um, uh, anything else you need? Uh, my question, I guess Keith and I are kind of working on it, is the liquor license for the muster, the chicken barbecue, and the polka night. The polka can we get night. can we get one we get blanket license for all of it? Maybe Fred, you can answer that one. Being a selectman, I I would have to ask Brian about that. Yeah, but you can take that one on, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Because, I mean, if we have to do it individually, my paperwork's filled out. But Keith out. thinks that we should be able to just do one blanket one for the three events over a week, a week and a half period, whatever it is, 10 days. Who are you going to use for bartenders? Uh, that's going to be a game time decision. My husband was a bartender and I was a barmaid on the last one. You know, we're not going to... Everybody wanted vodka, so get ready. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Just vodka. 
Anything on the tractor parade? Yes, I can update you on the tractor parade. Um, at this point in time, we've contacted and identified over 70 different owners slash farmers in Waitley, um, plus a few of the surrounding towns, like the farmers, I mean, like Swazlowski's and Simorowski's. So we're trying to basically keep it to the Waitley farmers and residents, but at the same point in time, there are a few farmers who come into Waitley and farm in Waitley from outside of town. So we're gonna, we're gonna allow that also. Another thing that was brought up and is in the plans to do is to have a consolidated um, group of the tractors since Consolidated Cigar was such a key, key element of farming back in the 60s, 70s and up to the 80s when they went out of business, but they were a huge part of farming back in the day. And so we're gonna attempt to locate as many tractors that were owned by Consolidated Farm and have a contingent of them in a group. And we think that'd be a great idea. Um, other than that, um, we're gonna, um, working with some of the people who are on my list for um, contact for businesses, as far as still finalizing the sponsorship portion of what they're looking to contribute towards food at the beginning and end of the tractor parade. Um, and other than that, we're we're counting on probably somewhere around 150 tractors. So it's going to be quite a long parade, and we pretty much have our parade route identified. But um, and to answer Sarah's question, she just messaged me. Yes, we have um, Garrett can bring his tractor, no problem. But um, I believe he actually was probably on our list already. So, um, anyways. Um, we're on top of it. The committee, I'm just sort of filling or, you know, working with the two, with the tractor parade committee. And so that's it for there. Great. Okay. Judy, can I turn it over to you to talk turn it over. events that the Historical Society is um, planning for the celebration? Sure. Um, I, I have to admit that the Historical Society is a little bit embarrassed that you don't already haven't been briefed before this and and before uh, this and and uh, I I don't know how to explain that and Jane and Adelia are here and can fill in for me if if I leave anything out. We are planning an exhibit called Becoming Whateley. A history and objects that will be in the Historical Society Museum. It will start with objects dating from 10,000 years ago and go up to the Whateley well pollution crisis in the mid 80s. Um, eventually, there will be a catalog, but that won't be ready for a while. Um, this will roll out gradually. We're, we're opening the first exhibits in early April for, for our annual meeting. We hope to have the full exhibit inaugurated by the Historical Society Spring Festival at Memorial Day. But we would like the exhibit to be open when there are events at Town Hall and, and hopefully at other times. It will normally be open on Tuesday mornings and Saturday mornings. But um, I can see from your calendar that you have events scheduled. I don't always know the times. So at least online, it doesn't give the time. So it We're would be helpful. We're still covering the times yeah. and I can share with you what we've got so far. Um, it would be helpful for that. Yeah. Um, we also are planning a Derricka Smith, who is our curator and and a great researcher is drafting a brief history of Whateley that will be published shortly. Um, I don't know any more than that, except that it's beautifully written and in process of being put together. 
we would like to schedule a speaker for the night of Sunday the 19th, which I gather is open on the schedule. Mm -hmm. And there, there has been hopefully at town hall so it can complement the exhibit. There's been a lot of interest lately in indigenous peoples. There's a local archeologist, uh, anthropologist named Pete Thomas in Deerfield who is knowledgeable about not only the early peoples but the geology and the changes in terrain over time. And he's, he's written papers and he understands about how the changes in geology influence native uh, living patterns. So our 10,000 year old artifacts date to paleo times. That was the very early times when the glaciers were just receding. It was still permafrost and tundra here and they were hunting caribou. I mean, you don't think of that in Waitley, but that's Waitley history. By the time we have settlers here, you have Lake Hitchcock having settled, the terrain changes, the patterns change, where the trails are changes. And he would like to, he's, he will talk about all that and tie all these peoples together. And just listening to him, you, you're spellbound. So we would like to do that Sunday night, um, which I gather is open. And I don't think you're setting up for the arts and crafts show till Monday. So. So one reason I'm here is to ask if we could have town hall that night, the auditorium. There is no, con I'm looking to Lisa just to make sure you don't need it Sunday night for setup. Nope. There's nothing scheduled for Sunday night. I think that would be a great addition to the program going on during the week or you know, for celebration week. And I think we can help promote that. Um, through all of the marketing efforts, just include it as one of the events happening as part of the celebration, if that's what the Historical Society would like us to do. We would love that and we, we would reciprocate. We have our website too. Um, and we hopefully can arrange for the museum to be open at other times as much as possible. It's got to do with volunteer time is something you all know about. Which, <laughs> is constrained and of course everybody's going to want to be all, at all your great events so that's going to be a complication but anyway the, the exhibit will be there through December um, I think it, hopefully we found some neat stuff I mean it's just stuff that people don't know about and, and it's it, I think it's going to be fun that sounds awesome anything else that you had Judy? Nothing. Adelia, Jane, do you want to add anything? No, you did a good job. More than I knew. The other thing that the Historical Society is helping us with, I don't know if, how much Judy knows about this. After our meeting last month, I reached out to Neil, uh, who's the president of the Historical Society, and I asked the question to rate, be raised at the next Historical Society meeting of if you were to open a time capsule 50 years from now, what would you like to see in it? And the Historical Society gave us a really interesting list of items from things current to today, like masks, um, one of our milk bottles, some other things, but also things representative of the history of the town, shards of pottery, we need to make the decision of what goes into the time capsule. And I don't feel that the large committee is probably the best way to go about that. I am more than happy to work on that. Oh, Neil offered the Historical Society's help with this as well. I am happy to work on this with someone from the Historical Society. I wanted to see if there's anyone else in this group who would like to be part of what do we leave for perpetuity? Is anybody interested in being part of the time capsule subcommittee? Nobody? Well, you at this point in time, you have Don and myself that were working on fabricating, you know, working with the tech school to fabricate it. Yeah. 
And would you like to be involved in in proposing? The group will not decide. The group will propose what goes into it. Then, then the larger committee will have to vote on it. So, Keith. Yeah, I mean, I certainly, I certainly can willing to sit in on that part of it. However, we got to keep in mind um, limitations of the size that we had it built at. So. What what are those my next questions? What are those my next dimensions are? I I don't have them. I Don and I have talked about it. I don't have that information in front of me. Just say, if you can just email that to me, um, that would be helpful because I'm thinking you know things like a school yearbook in because people would like to see what they look like when they were in you know in elementary school on the other hand is the size of the box big enough to take that kind of thing so uh, clearly that is the first determinant um susan yes susan mm -hmm. i'll be willing to help you with that great thank you thank you brenda okay i think that i think that's a good group um Adelia, I wanted to loop back with you. After our meeting last month, I presented to the Grange. The Grange had expressed interest in helping in, or being involved in some way. I went to a meeting of the Grange and presented what we're doing, and Adelia was there, and I left. And Adelia, you were going to be part of. You were going to be part of the discussion and decision. That's how would like to help, and I was. Hoping you could share that with us. I, I think there were um, I think there were only six people there that night, and there that night uh, would volunteer. So we can get more. Okay. Yeah. If you don't mind following up with them and getting back to us, it just seems like a good fit. Um. If and honestly, we are going to be looking for volunteers at the time people to help with things and i think the grange might be a great resource for that but let's see how the grange would like to help with that i promised i would get back to souvenirs so far in the way of souvenirs we have the milk bottles and we have the 250 candles we're going to need somebody to um, coordinate selling these things at an event. And Chris, you and I had talked about that and I wanted to see where you netted out on that. Hi, yes. Um, I think I'd be happy to do the souvenir do coordination. Excellent, thank you. And then we also have- Susan? Yes. Susan, another thing that, you know, John might want to chime in also, I had talked to John, I don't know if he followed up anymore with Tim or someone at Pacific Printing and the possibility of having them coordinate the t-shirt sales themselves um, and maybe come up with something that, because there was comments been made by people about would like t-shirts to be, mm -hmm. to be had. And at the same point in time, no one seemed to want to have like a large amount of them ordered and have us having to sit on inventory, whereas potentially we could have Pacific Printing be the one that facilitates the inventory and they can print them and make them as as orders came in. So we might be able to work something out through them directly so that we don't have to sit on inventory ourselves. That would be great. That sounds like the perfect solution to that problem. Keith, Keith also, I have the thought. So I have we the should thought. have a group of T-shirts in a different color just for volunteers for whatever event. So, you know, whether it's orange or green or whatever, that reserved color just for volunteers, that we give to volunteers. That we give to volunteers. Yeah, to be, you know, at this point in time, the, you know, we are in the process of already ordering the the ones for the parade committee. Um, but you're right that they can, through the, some of the other different events, the same thing can happen, but we've got to know what the needs are 
sooner than later as far as sizes from the other volunteers that might need them. Which brings to oh, Brenda. Yes. Oh, Brenda. Uh, okay, I, I agree that you know, we should have a shirt, probably something bright that will stand out in crowds so people can know who the volunteers are. But also for the committee mem members, maybe a ribbon or something that lists the committee. And so people know if they're just a volunteer or this is somebody that knows what's going on with the particular event. Because mm -hmm. I was thinking the same thing, just some way identifying the, the committee of a particular event. Yeah, I think that's a great idea to have, you know, attach you know, a ribbon it, to the Yeah, to the some shirt. kind of ribbon that says, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. You can get those Mylar uh, holders that clip on, you know, with a pin, and then you could put a, a ribbon on that on top of it. So you can print them yourselves and put them in the little mylar sleeve that you attach to your t-shirt and hang the ribbon from there. I've seen, Brenda, I've done that in business. It's an inexpensive way to do it. But also idea. the other thing, I'll be happy to help you with that. That okay. uh, veneer and stuff. So put me on that. Great, okay. Thank you. I'm just making a note of that. Okay, then that brings me to volunteers. Um, Amy or Lola, one of you I thought was going to reach out to the school to see about getting students to help with family day. I went to the PTO meeting two months ago, I think, and they said when it got closer to the date to give them a call. So I'll try to go to the next meeting and talk to them. Because I feel like the students would be great assets and I don't know if they can be bought with a t-shirt. Uh, if they volunteer, they get a t-shirt, you know, an official t-shirt to wear. Well, um, wasn't some, someone going to talk to the somewhere at Frontier? Yeah, I was going to reach out to, or I need to find out the co who to reach out to with the coaches or um, someone for the, either the, either a football team or softball or baseball um, to see about having some students come. But I think giving them a shirt for if they volunteer is a great idea. Um, and I would, I hope that they would, they would, you know, participate and help us out. Um, but Lola, I also still like, you know, having, if any PTO members are willing to volunteer too, just so we kind of have a backup, I guess, in case the kids don't show up, but. Yeah. You no, would Bob's probably call Scott Reg. Sorry, Katie, you were trying to say something? Yeah, Bob Smith's uh, track team goes pretty much off of a long time. He, I'm sure we could get him to get his girls in there and the, the track people besides football players and all those guys that are at the school, maybe the band. I know the three county fair, we work on that, Jim's a, a counselor, but the, everyone who volunteers gets a free t-shirt and that's a really good way to get people to show up. <laughs> and be there and work the hours that you need them to work. And if, if I can just chime in with a request for people who are running events, if we if you can sort of sit and try to figure out how many volunteers you think you're going to need, yeah. you know, for, you know, like for family day, for the bounce house and for the raceway and, you know, just so we get an idea of how many shirts we're, we're talking about. And for other events too, if you need someone for taking tickets or at the barbecue for cleaning up after, for eat, maybe that's what we, at our next meeting when we go through the list of events, I'm gonna ask each of you what you need in the way of volunteers. And if you think, where you think you can source volunteers from. Um, because we may not have enough from out in the community if there are people involved in an organization that we should ask. Which brings me to another question of our organizations. The Grange contacted me initially, or you know, contacted us to initiate the discussion. Are there other community organizations that we people can think of that we should be talking to who may want to be involved other than just marching in the parade? 
if, if, that, if you can think of anybody now, great. If not, if anything comes to you, let me know because we can. We want to involve people of all avenues within this town. And if there's some organization that you know of, we can reach out to them. We can reach out to them. Next topic, photography. We feel it is very important to record this event. I mean, the whole idea of this event is to celebrate the town and mark this point in time, looking forward, like, you know, the time capsule 50 years from now. We want to record this event in a way that people in the future will look back at and see what we have done. Do people have thoughts for where we can get photographers? Uh, Susan, you and I have talked about this a little bit. Susan. Yes. Um, FCAT is doing the parade. Say and that F again. FCAT is doing is recording the parade. Yes. And I get I believe that I sent him a, the copy of the calendar of events and i'm not sure they have a the updated calendar of events uh, and they have a new director jonathan i don't know whatever his last name is um if she, we somebody should contact him and uh, to me they should be the same photographer and i'm i'm sure that fcat would want to cover those is that oh, I miss you may not know the answer to this question. Does that also give us you know, the still photographs that we would want for the commemorative book and that would go in the historical society for people to look at 50 or 100 years from now and see how quaint we all look? I don't know. I don't know. I, we can reach out to them. I'll talk to I think she's got a relationship with them. Well, Susan, I, that is the email I forwarded you that I did when I emailed Kevin Murphy and then he emailed yeah. me back and then I got an email from Jonathan saying that they want a list of all the events and the times and the days. And then if we wanted to get some of the students to take photographs of some of the events. We talked about having some kind of, um, you know, give them some kind of money or something to do that. And maybe that's something we should talk about. What would be a fair amount if we wanted you know, a high school student to come and photograph, say, the art show, like, what's a reasonable amount for that? Because I think it's going to be more than just a t-shirt. Oh, for something like that, definitely. I, I, I agree. And that's sort of what I was alluding to with where I was going with this conversation was um, your conversations with them. We can reach out to the school and see, I don't know if they would have a photography club or if they know of a few students who are particularly interested in photography we can see what they have i just i just lola i see your hand i know a student that went to frontier that is going into photography right now i brianna but i don't remember what her married name is now i could reach out to her if you wanted me to that would be fantastic. That's exactly what the next thing I was going to say was, does anybody know any photographers in and around town rather than just relying on students? We had also talked about having the ability to have photos uploaded to the cloud. And it seems like we, I know we discussed it before and, and the town couldn't do it, but we were looking at creating one ourselves because there's going to be a tremendous amount in this day of digital photography with, with cell phone cameras. There's going to also be a lot of good candid shots that might want to be included from individuals that there's no way a single photographer can catch them all. So encouraging the members of the community to upload pictures of things that they that's a great idea, Keith. Yeah. yeah. Crowdsource it. A way to crowdsource photography like that that you know of? I will say that um, Hatfield, what they did is they simply had people posting to Instagram with a specific hashtag so that you could kind of collect all of that. Um, so certainly sharing on social media is, is a possibility, but if we want to actually collect those into a depository, 
we have to think of a more kind of formal way to do that. Although you can collect them just through, you know, Google Drive even now. Katie, I see your mouth moving, but you're muted. Barbara Walker, Bruce Walker's wife is quite a photographer. She took a lot of pictures of the last parade that we had in town. She took she some you could get you would feel comfortable reaching out oh, to yeah, I'll ask her. She's great. She's a beautiful work. And I feel like we need multiple people. There's going to be a lot of events going on all over town, and it's going to be too much for one or two people to have. I like the idea of crowdsourcing among the community, but I'd love to have a few designated photographers to make sure we're, everything is covered and we're getting to be pictures for me to them. Donnie yeah. Bates is great too. If you know somebody, contact them and let us know. I'm sorry, uh, Sarah, it, you it, over your hand? It, I know a couple of photographers who went to Hallmark, all Hallmark School of Photography. I'll contact them and see if they'll give some time. Great. Um, Thank you. If I can say, it'd be great if any one of these people any would take on the job of coordinating it, you know, just or being an organizer of the photographers. So it sounds like we're going to have a lot of people running around and we need some sort of organization to it. And if there's so that that's a really fair point. And if there is someone who does this professionally or semi-professionally, they may know how to do it on the cloud or some way some more, you know, to facilitate what we're trying to accomplish here. So I encourage everyone to Talk to who you know and let us know what you find out. Um, what have we skipped? We have skipped infrastructure. You mentioned about the tent a little bit, Keith and John. Anything else going on on infrastructure? Um, I'll just elaborate a little bit more on the tent and just making, you know, I did make that comment before and that the tent will be available the entire duration of our event so it, the tent it's getting set up it'll be up before the 18th and not taken and down until after the 26th so if there's any type of events or last minute needs to be undercover the tent will be 40 feet by 120 feet so and it will also have the stage set up at one end so it will be up for duration Great. Will there be chairs available the whole the, the duration? Obviously, we can't leave them out. But if you know, Joyce the, wants the to chairs, have those concerts there, the chairs and the tables will be there for the duration. Yes. Great. Good. 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 Um. <clears throat> oh, town gifts. Keith, you were going to share the benches. Yep, that's my next thing I was getting to. Um. So after much research and discussion in regards to looking into more local sourcing of stones. Um, I spent quite a bit of time working with the different um, stone companies in Goshen and Ashfield. And I had gotten an estimate for a stone and they were, let me bring that up. Um, Goshen stones were going to be somewhere between $3,500 and $3,700, which is um, a lot more than the granite. The granite estimate was around $2,800 to $3,000. Um, I don't know. I, I don't have it on my computer in front of me, but the ability to share the screen, if I don't, Susan, can you do that on what I had sent you or not? I do not have my email open. I have facilitated sharing. Let me see if I can quickly right. get, get into my email. That was part um, of my issue. You know, I can I can talk about them, and you know the 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 thing that I don't know if we had all seen the picture of the granite um, bench beforehand. It's it was it's a five foot long bench with the back on it, and on the back it was going to have our 250th logo engraved in the center of it. And on the left hand side, as you look at it, it will say 1771. And as you look at the right hand side, it'll say 2021. Um, okay, that, that on the screen. 
that is one that was that's a concept drawing of a of a bench but that's not the one that would be um, all right so that's a that's a bench that would be which do you want uh, me to show tell me tell me which one right, to show uh, if you click on that one right there susan oh, um maybe not cuz it's tiny yeah, that's that's the concept drawing of the granite bench of what the granite bench would look like. And as I said, in the center of it, we'll have our 250th logo. And then on the left side would be 1771. And on the right hand side is 2021. And that one was, um, again, gray, gray granite. And that cost was between 2800 and 3000. The other ones which here. either that's that's what's going to look like when you go with the goshen stone um they're much more um run of the mill stones they're jag they're more jagged type thing but it's natural natural stone and that's those were the estimates of the 3500 to 3700 dollars um and, and so the same thing that's another, okay. you know, that's okay. depending on this, the actual piece of stone that they work with, but that's, those are two different ones that were built in Greenfield and that's what they would be looking like. So okay. to basically report back and it's, you know, obviously it's the committee's decision, but it would be my, um, my feeling that we should go with the granite stone. Um, I just feel that it's 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 it just I don't know if that's just my opinion, but um, I guess we can put it up for a vote and and go forth. But I definitely need to get it in. I need to have a decision made tonight so that we can get it made so that it's here by by June. Before we put it up to a vote, I'd want to mention that I shared those pictures with the library board last week. I was asked to join their meeting and considering the bench is going to be on their property and they all preferred the granite one. They thought it looked more sturdy, like it would stand the test of time. It, um, they preferred that one. I will put this to the vote, but as Keith pointed out to me, the only people who I'm going to ask to vote are the only are the people who are sort of approved to vote on broad. Keith, tell me if I'm saying this wrong. On broad committee issues, meaning you are quote registered with the town as part of the steering committee for this. So please don't be insulted if I don't call on you, but I'm going to call on the people who the town recognizes as being part of the steering committee. Fred, so you are voting on the granite bench versus the Goshen stone bench. Is that right, Keith? Yes. Okay. Fred. Brian. Jane. Brian. John. Granite. Hey. Chip. Um, I like the uh, rustiness of the Goshen. I like the uh, rustiness of the Goshen. Okay, Keith. Sarah, I think you were on the original list. I do like the Goshen, but I respect the library. Okay. Um, uh, Mola, Katie, you were not on the list. Lisa. I like the granite. I like the granite. Adelia? Granite. Ashley? I think the granite would be most appropriate with the architecture of the library. Okay, and Chris? Chris, you're muted. Apologies, granite. Okay, so by my tally, uh, <laughs> moving ahead with the granite. And let me know if you want to to work with you on anything, you know, however I can help you, I'm happy to. And Keith, let me know okay. if you need a, a check for a deposit. A check for a deposit. Will do. Excellent. And I'm just looking over uh, 
anything with yet. I have not heard from Allison, from Allison what's happening on the panorama. I don't honestly don't know if that's moving ahead or not. I reached out to her and never heard back. I don't know if anyone else has talked to her about it lately. Um, I have a meeting that she should be at a week from tonight. So if I can, I will ask her then. Any other topics anybody has? Any other uh, we have, you want to come back to the candles. Back to the candles. Oh, well, the, the candles in the context of souvenir, that they are one of the souvenirs that we would be selling. Do we want to set a price for the candles now and start promoting them on Facebook or, or do we want to save them to sell at events? So I guess I have two questions for the committee. Do we want to sell them now or wait for the events? There are 250 of them. And I wanted to talk about price. Fred and I did a little research on that. But let's address the first issue. Do we want to do the event or? Sell them. So John is in favor of selling them now. Do, what do people think? I guess my concern is if we have large crowds at events and we don't have a lot of them to sell, or the flip of that is, as we've seen with the milk bottles, we haven't sold a lot of them, but every time we sell one, my poor husband goes driving around town to find the person because we don't have a vehicle for get, you know, a mechanism. We have a vehicle, it's called his car. We don't have a mechanism. And we're not selling a ton of them. So I guess as I'm talking this through, I'm leaning toward, yeah, my vote would be towards let's save them for the events. But do we think we can sell all 250? Because believe me, I want my garage back. I, I, my opinion would be, this is Chris, um, my opinion would be to, would be uh, to sorry, I'm getting some feedback, um, would be to allot a certain number to be sold in advance and then allot uh, some to be reserved for um, the actual celebration time period. Um, um, and I think and it could be, it could be a, a way to um, generate um, some enthusiasm. Generate some enthusiasm. Good point. Good point. Other people still it hasn't occurred to me uh, that uh, I I think it would be my personal opinion. I'd like to my see at least opinion at orders, but instead of having to run around and deliver them to all the people that ordered to actually set up a time, okay. On such and such a date, they're going to be at the town hall. If you pre-ordered, you come pick them. You ordered, you come pick them. Then you have to deliver to individuals. That's a good suggestion. Is I would like a suggestion if Chris is available, or not necessarily Chris if she can't, but someone be available for town meeting. We could advertise to the public that we will be selling these things at town meeting beforehand ah, and the milk bottles too it doesn't have to just be the town. The town i'd be happy to be at the town meeting to um help with yeah souvenirs you could also bundle, could also bundle, the, candle. bundle the candle with a ticket price for an event you know like if you're going to charge people to come in a donation if you donate x amount of number you get a candle you know and then it's a great idea Great. Mm -hmm. well, I want to talk about a candle or a milk bottle or something for a certain level. You get this. The next level, you get this. And then you're, is, you're really paying for it, but it makes it look like it's a great donation. <laughs> you're paying for their brain. Why um, don't I do a little research? Oh, Ashley, you were going to say something. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I just wanted to say, yeah. even if we decide to sell these in person, that doesn't preclude us from promoting them online, just the fact that there's a limited number and that there's only 250 of them um, might make them more desirable. Definitely. Definitely. 
I agree with that, Ashley. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to um, interrupt you. Um, and I think uh, the suggestion around um, having an allotment to be sold prior to and an allotment to be sold at the event, we can say we can somehow, you know, build some energy around that where we only have this many to sell. Exactly. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, I'm thinking town meeting is a great venue because we can generate excitement for the whole, it would be fabulous if we have that calendar, Ashley and Lisa were talking about putting together an events calendar. If we have that by town meeting, that people can get a copy of that, that they can you know, start getting excited about it and we will be you know, selling the, ca the candles, selling the milk bottles. Um, I feel like town meeting could be a shooting fish in a barrel kind of event. When is town meeting? I should know this. I should know Fred this. Or Amy? Sorry. Amy? May 24th. Okay. All right. So that's getting relatively close to it. I don't, I thought it was sooner. You know, can I say something? I think if you appeal to the town for the meeting and say, look it. We've got these wonderful candles that have been donated and we've got these great milk bottles and whatever else we wanna sell t-shirts. We're hoping that each and every one of you will buy something while you're here to put on this wonderful event for the town. And I think if you put it that way, please come with your wallet. We really want to help you something like that. You can say it in a nice way. But I think that might help a lot. I'm sure we can work with, I don't know if it's Amy or Lynn who's doing the, the robocalls these days, but incorporate that into calls about town meeting of, and you know, these will be available, bring, yeah. bring your money, get them all, get them all they're hot. Yes. That all said, Ashley, would you want to put it on Facebook? Because if so, I can, or Fred or I could drop one off to you. Yeah, um, that'd be great. I can take some some photos with it and yes that'd be awesome okay that that sounds good they did a nice job it's got a hydrangea scent um which is not overpowering it's just very pleasant and i don't know if hydrangeas will still be in will be in bloom at the time of the celebration, but I was even thinking potentially we could reach out to LaSalle and see if we could do some sort of fresh hydrangeas at the table if they're in blue, if they're available. Um, what else? What am I missing? Price, if we're going to put them on Facebook, we got to price, price them. Yeah, I thought it was something. Fred and I did a little research. We went into Yankee Candle Village. They have this size candle marked. So the retail price was $31 or two for 45. It, and 31 was, or half, half, price, half, for half price for the second. Half price for the second. Which brings it to the right. second, the two would be 45. Where did we also see it for 19? Wasn't uh, there? They, they had their sort of remainders at 19. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if, if you go into that, that sale, oh, that, that sale, this size candle of scents that they're no longer carrying, you know, the Christmas candles and all of that, were 19. So in a way, that tells me roughly where we would be thinking for, where we should be thinking for price, meaning definitely not lower than 19 and probably not much higher than 31. Um, we possibly could charge a premium for them, but not, I don't, can't see it going for $50. What are people's thoughts on pricing? 25 seems like an easy number. I'll I second, it. A second that. I'll third it. 25, yep. Any? And, and, and by doing that, we can advertise them <laughs> as <laughs> less than you can get from a Yankee Candle. <laughs> <laughs> and they Move have those candles. <laughs> with our logo on them, which the ones at the Yankee Candle are not. Do we want to have any sort of group pricing or no need if you buy two? No. 
No. I, so, I don't think we should do that. Let's try to stretch them out. And it'd be one thing if we had an unlimited amount, but we don't. And I think we'll have no problem selling 250 of them at $25 a piece. Okay, let me, I think I have to put this to a vote. Let me go the other way. So you're voting yes or no for selling the candles at $25 a piece. Chris, you're muted. Chris, you're, if you're speaking, you're muted. I apologize. I'm on a phone tonight and I'm really hampered. Um, <laughs> okay. uh, yes, I think that we should price them at 25. Thank you. Ashley? Yes. Adelia? Adelia? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Sarah? Yes. John? Yes. John? Yes. Chip? Yes. Keith? Yes. Jane? 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 I'm not hearing you. Jane looks maybe. Oh no. Are you there, Jane? Can you? Jane, can you? I can't hear you. You're breaking up. You call my yeah, name. I'm having a hard time hearing you. And vote yes if you approve twenty-five dollars a piece for the price for the candles. Vote yes. no. Okay. Yes. Vote no. Okay. Fred. Yes. And me, yeah. So it is unanimous among the registered committee members. Really hard. Actually, I'll drop one at your house tomorrow. Sounds good. I'll be here. Sounds good. I'm here. <laughs> Does anyone know if we will have to pay sales tax for the state on any of the souvenirs that are sold? Souvenirs that are sold? No, we're exempt. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Any other topics? This is Ashley, yes. <laughs> Ashley, yes. Uh huh. I just want uh -huh. to give a quick update on um, getting the website getting and the, website um, the and events um, listed, the event. all the information that I've been collecting from everyone. I'm going to interrupt for one second. Keith, can you mute? When somebody talks and I hear echoing, your box lights up. I'm wondering if you're the one who, thank you, if you're the one that's echoing. Try again, Ashley. Sure. Um, so I'd ask everyone to fill out those, uh, the Google forms to collect information about these different events. I got almost everything. Um, we are missing information for cruise night and the steam engine show. Um, I'm missing the tractor parade, Keith, but I wrote down what you, your update. So I think I'm actually okay there, except I'll need to get um, the time and the um, route from you at some point. Um, any of the tethered balloon rides and we don't have any information on concerts yet, although I, it sounds like we don't have all of the um, musicians booked for that. Um, as I get these events posted, they're going to be on Facebook, then they'll be linked from Facebook to our waitly250.com page. But I'm going to be emailing all the owners of these events just to have you review the information that's located on the event page um, to make sure that there aren't any errors, that the, the event is represented as it is or as it should be. These can be updated as we get closer to the event um, with things like ticketing and um, any more detailed information like the, the, the things that we've booked for family fun day and that sort of thing. So I just wanna let everyone know that they'll be hearing from me um, to review that information once it is available online. Great. Ashley, sorry, are you putting together any kind of email list for blasts or not? I have not, no. Okay. I did meet with um, the Ch Franklin County Chamber of Commerce um, who have offered to send out information on our event to, to their list so that hits about a thousand people um business owners and other towns in franklin county okay, but i know if if we want to put that together over the next month or so i've got emails for almost everyone who's contributed so far i don't think it's a bad idea i think the more information that we have out there 
the better, even if it's just pointing people to the, the resources on the website. So I can connect with you on okay. that thread. Ashley, I wanted to get back to what your conversation with the chamber, and because we had talked about bringing that up to the whole group. Right. The chamber has offered to help promote our events. Uh, it's the Franklin County Chamber through their newsletter and through some events that they have. You know, they could hand out material. One thing that I want, I'm not discouraging us from doing that. But one thing that I wanted us to think about is if we are going to have ticketed events, do we want to be advertising them countywide before people in town have had an opportunity to buy tickets? Or do we want to have a two-phase two ticket sales? For example, uh, the chicken barbecue that it is, we could make it only open to town residents, or we could say town residents only before June 1st, and then non-town residents can buy tickets after June 1st. Um, that means we have to have a way to check where people's addresses and think that through, but I just, I wanted to just, I don't know the answer, but I wanted to talk to the group about this. It makes me a little bit nervous if we're sending this out to a thousand people across the county that town residents may get closed out of attending events because it's really popular with people elsewhere. Do people have thoughts on that, how to handle that? I mean, I mean it certainly is, potentially an issue with like the polka um you know we while we're not charging for it, at the same point in time we can't have you know 1500 people showing up for for that event but um so that's got to have to be somewhat controlled and by all means the chicken barbecue um, having numbers somewhere around 300, we were talked about trying to maybe squeak out a few more if needed, but somewhere in that vicinity of 300, we can start for the chicken barbecue. So um, it would certainly be nice if there was a way that the word could get out, you know, gets out to our residents prior to that. But at the same point in time, if we're going to be selling tickets, through the online system that Ashley can come up with. I hate to try to come up with a method of if you're not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a tricky one. Yeah, being able to actually verify that people are residents is something that I don't think, a job that nobody wants to have to do, to have to chase people. And I don't know if the system, I'd have to look to see if, um, Eventbrite allows for you to, to check that if it will do it automatically based on like a billing address, for example. Even that gets tricky though, because a lot of the people in town do not have Waitley addresses. Yeah. Correct. I was going to say, I, I myself am South Deerfield. So yes. Right. Um, what so about I, a Waitley town listing? You can get those at the town offices. That's based on the census. True, but I'm saying that, that, that it would be labor intensive to have to check on every ticket. And I don't, I don't want to sign up for that job personally. I don't think anybody probably wants to. Um, I mean, one option is we could wait to advertise some of these events until, you know, right before maybe early June is when we, we hit the wider list and keep most of our, our other marketing just very concentrated here in Waitley. And what that would mean for the chamber is that we would ask them not to send out anything until June, which they could do. They send the newsletter out twice monthly. We, we could have the, the chamber send out a sort of generic uh, notices, just not specific for events. Or there may be events we have no problem with them opening up, you know, family day, for example, could that accommodate a larger number of people that the more the merrier. 
and we limit the events that we talk about in those. And it's not just the chamber, because we run into the same issue if we're advertising on the radio, if we're putting something in the recorder and the gazette. Right. Anytime we're getting the news out beyond town residents, we need to have a plan. Oh, I guess one last thing I'll say in regards to that is, um, I mean, we're now in the middle of March, so perhaps maybe by the next meeting um, for the, like the, for instance, a chicken barbecue, we might be able to have identified a price in our next meeting. And at that point in time, once we have a price, we can certainly begin to sell tickets locally. You know, to the Waitley residents, even if it's done on the um, through you know the town's online calling, something along that lines. Mm -hmm. We also I mean, had talked about, about the special issue of the scoop, uh, you know, closer to the event. And we can have do we can time when we send that out because then we know we are reaching only and all town residents telling them yeah. to buy their tickets by a certain date in order before it gets opened up to the broader audience. That's one way we have of reaching the targeted audience. We, we may be able to also include that with the robo call for town meeting. If we mm -hmm. add that onto that and sell tickets at, for the first time at town meeting, I have a table set up just for that. That's not a bad yeah. idea. Does Eventbrite let us do that? Can we sell out uh, something like it, that? It sounds. I need to do a little bit of homework on ticketing, but I should have more. I'll ha I'll come back with more information. Um, okay. To the broader group. Yeah, I mean, but town I think, meeting I think, is a great place to sell tickets. Yeah, I think town meeting would be a great place to sell tickets for the barbecue and keep it to town residents. And we can also encourage attendance at town meeting by saying this will be your opportunity, your, your first opportunity to buy tickets. Right. I, I love the idea of leveraging town meeting for this. Admittedly, it's not that far in advance. It's three weeks before, but we can work with that. Okay, so let's all think about it and revisit this at our next call. Um, we don't have to have decided by then. In terms of those forms that you have not gotten back, I will reach out to the Uphams for about the steam engine show and see if I can get you information on that. I know Joyce had been talking with Gary for cruise night. We would need her for that. Yeah, and I know, and she's holding, she has the concert information too, because I think that'll fall into place hopefully within the next few weeks. But yeah, yeah. yeah I think otherwise we we're, in, we're in decent shape, so. Good. I feel like we need to talk to Joyce before our next call. Um, Fred, you said she's back in a week? Yeah, she's she's away this week. I don't know if she's back Friday or next Monday, but I know she's away during this week. Okay, we can reach out to her next week. Uh, any other business? I'll just ask the question is, um, now that we're moving past our COVID restrictions, do we want to go back in person or is everybody comfortable staying? Uh, my understanding is if we meet in person, it has to be hybrid. So there will still be the option of joining by Zoom. Is that, I'm looking to Fred as I'm that's, saying that. That's, you know. that's correct. And the town correct. has purchased town has equipment that will enable that if we need at town offices. I guess I put it to a vote of should our, eight, our next meeting is April 11th. Do we want it to be Zoom only or in person and Zoom? Fred? Uh, in person and Zoom. Jane? In person. In person. Keith? I'll go hybrid in person, Zoom. Chip? Uh, hybrid. John? Hybrid. Hybrid. Sarah? Hybrid. 
Lisa? Hybrid. Adelia? Hybrid. Chris? Hybrid. Ashley? Ashley? I like the hybrid mode. I like that. And I go for hybrid. Okay. So our June 11th meeting hybrid, um, assuming we can have a meeting room. That's the other topic. I will. Unfortunately, we've lost Amy. I will uh, reach out to Amy tomorrow and see if we can have the meeting room. But I think that would be a great idea. Uh, yes, so that will definitely be the that will definitely be the only issue is if there's already something planned at the town offices that day. Yeah, I will let everybody know. When, Did we finish up at town hall? Did we finish up at town? When are we meeting at town hall? The issue with town hall is it doesn't have the um, device for doing the hybrid meeting. Okay. We would have to do it on somebody's laptop, which just makes it really tough to run a meeting. Okay. So I know those of us who live on this side of town, town hall is easier, but there's a reason to go to Sandy Lane. Anything else? One question. We're next meeting is scheduled for April 11th. Do we have any reason to go to every two weeks rather than every once a month? given how close we are now. Oh, that's Only if we go back hour. to an hour. Because yeah, right, right now we're at an hour yeah. for, for this meeting. Yeah, if we met more often, the meetings would probably short, be shorter because we wouldn't have as much to talk about. But I don't know how people feel about meeting every two weeks. I, I think we should take the, from the, our next meeting and from that point on I'll go to a two week period. I think I agree with that, but I think I have to put that to a vote. This this is another reason to meet in person. When we meet in person, we don't spend half our meeting calling out your names. Do we have to vote on that if we if we're no, not no the, the chair can make that decision. Ah, thank you. Keith, you and I agree. We'll meet I support the every two weeks on the time frame you guys mentioned. Does anybody object to that? This is not an official vote for the record, but does anybody have a reason to meet in two weeks? Or we'll just meet in a month, and at that point, we will meet every two weeks after that. No objection? No objection? Uh, okay. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. I'm going to break the rules. Call in favor, say aye. Call my voice from calling roll. Aye. 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 Hopefully, town hall, but hybrid aye. at seven. Thank you. And send me your information about fundraising. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.